Testing, one, two, three, testing. I feel like I'm yelling when I don't have the microphone on. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin, and today I'm finally presenting my album review of Steely Dan's Asia, uh, released in 1977. It is one of their most popular albums, if not, their most popular album. And of course, if you've missed it, you can go back and watch my first listens of each of the songs in this album. And as a precursor and an encouragement, you guys should definitely, if you haven't already and you're interested in the album, uh, take a look at the documentary of the making of this album, which I did so before doing this review. It is an immaculate and meticulous piece of music, a piece of jazz, pop, with a little bit of rock sensibility. They put it in a shaker, shake it all up, Give you a little whipped cream, give you a cherry on top, and present it to you. It's a little sleazy, it's cool and breezy, but it feels good. <laughs> it's as catchy as it is funky, it's as groovy as it is just melodic. The line between jazz, pop, and rock, and funk is so blurred in this album that I couldn't really tell you which side it lands on. It just, it's its own little interesting little fusion, and it does it so well. Of course, because of the direction by Walter Becker and Donald Fagan, but also because of all the musicians that feature in this album itself. And Fagan had said in that documentary that they needed session musicians with a greater palette in what they could do. And it's true. I mean, when you think of a palette, when you think of painting, the more colors and shades and tones that you're able to paint with, the more creativity you have and the wider your range is to express that creativity. So they hired session musicians that were able to play to their strengths, play to what they knew, bring out the best in those musicians, and apply those into the songs in which they're featured. So you have musicians such as Chuck Rainey, Bernard Purdy, uh, Michael McDonald, Larry Carlton. I mean, you have just big names in both the jazz, funk worlds, and they bring them together and they created Asia. Donald and Walter are relentless in just how perfect they want the album and they want their songs to be. But I also feel like that challenging mentality kind of passes on to the musicians that they have featured in the album in once again bringing out the best in them. Dean Parks had said that it was a two-step process in recording to one, get to perfection, and then two, pass perfection to the point where it feels natural and you can kind of loosen up a little bit. And you can kind of get that in the album because it's exceptionally polished, it's very well produced, and it moves insanely well. But at the same time, as polished and perfect and seamless as it all moves, it also does feel pretty loose, somewhat, not totally, but somewhat improvisational, and that kind of helps the creative juices flow just a little better. And there's so many details in the music itself that on repeated and repeated listens, and I'm sure in future listens, that I'm going to discover on my own. Uh, for example, I didn't know about the synths and the acoustic guitar and Deacon Blues. It's very minimal, and I only heard it when they had isolated the track on the documentary, showing it off. But once you hear it, you can't ever not hear it. <laughs> and all these details and all the polish and all the jazz and all the pop and these, in, these incredibly catchy choruses, which by the way, they know how to construct a catchy chorus, okay? Uh, it all carries through the whole album. Really each song is its own little self-contained little piece of Walter and Donald's soul. And it really shows through in the way that not only they present the music, but the musicians who are playing their parts as well. Let's start with the first song, Black Cow. Now, you guys may not know, but I have notes right under the camera <laughs> so I can kind of reference them as I'm talking. Okay, Black Cow, I didn't write any notes about it. Why? I don't know what else to say about it. I think that that is the perfect opener. Right off the bat, it catches you with this groove and it is just so good. The harmonies, the chorus. Drink your big black cow and get out of here. The saxophone is great on it. The drumming is fantastic. I love the horns that come in on the second verse. I mean, it's just a really well-constructed song. Definitely one of my favorites. And in this kind of album, there's a lot of those. Asia was a song in which the vocals, I had to become a little more acquired to. I don't know why, it just, they didn't capture me at first. I liked them, but I didn't like, like for example, in the chorus, Asia. Upon repeated listens, this song jams, okay? The song kicks, especially, especially the instrumental break. The instrumental break in this, uh, in this song. Drums, crazy, crazy, crazy good, okay? 
um, the beautiful and intense guitar solo was short but powerful and hits the same and then that saxophone solo by Wayne Shorter is just fire. <laughs> it begins very peaceful and then it just picks up steam from there. Once again, catchy chorus, great instrumentals. I'm gonna say pretty much the same thing for every song. <laughs> Deacon Blues probably has my favorite chorus uh, on the album. It's a funny story of hubris and someone wanting to be something they're not, uh, delusions and trying to be even bigger than you really are. One thing that I really love is those uh, beautiful and nocturnal like keys that play in the gaps in the verse. And then after the chorus ends, those sweet female harmonies that come in, Deacon Blues. I mean, it once again, it's just one of those songs that jams, it's funky, everything's just right about it. And like I said, I'm pretty much doing the same comments for every song because I feel that they all kind of retain the same spirit in the way that they're constructed. They are all so well constructed and well structured and they're well put together, they sound great. I mean, they're just, they're good. Peg is one of the most fun songs in the verse, especially, uh, just by the rapid, uh, quick delivery on the vocals, uh, the chorus, especially with Michael McDonald starring on it. But like that, definitely. Um, but it's it's one of the more fun and up tempo songs in the album because the whole album kind of like it's pretty slow. It's pretty like cool, relaxed. It just drifts. But Peg is one of those songs that like it picks up. One thing that I learned, especially in the documentary, uh, the bass line, which is fantastic. But the bass line. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that Chuck had snuck in some uh, slapping, which they didn't want on the album. And it's really funny hearing him describe how he kind of like turned away <laughs> in the studio and was kind of slapping, but he didn't want them to see it. And then once you hear it, it's like you can't not hear it. So that's what I love about this album is that going through each of the songs, you can listen to it sitting down and really paying attention to the musicianship and how well constructed and produced it all is. Or you can just kick back in the kitchen, dance with your shoes off and just kind of chill with it. Home at last. Uh, we got the Purdy shuffle in this one. You guys know I love Bernard Purdy. Uh, his drumming, the shuffle, is well known, and I love it. And the beautiful horn section that just comes up, rises like waves, crashes back down like the sea. Those jazzy opening chords really set you up for the journey and the odyssey you're about to take. And that drum beat, to me, it always leaves you wanting more, okay? It plays constantly throughout the whole song, but I still want more and it really just pushes it along with smooth sailing from then on. You get the horns, the keys, the guitar, they just pop up, they pop down. And even singing wise, there's this kind of lazily laid back tone to it. And to me, you can imagine, you know, him just kind of drifting along in the sea, just kind of, you know, waiting to find home. I Got The News is one of the songs I don't really love that much. I don't know quite what it is about it, but it just doesn't hit me the same. And it kind of hits me as filler on the album which I know disappoints some of you because some of you have said that this is your favorite song on the album. And part of me is like, really? <laughs> but with all due respect, uh, I really do enjoy the guitar solo in it. Uh, I'm not really a fan of the breaks and the rhythm. Uh, I don't enjoy the vocals so much on this one. This one just doesn't move and hit me the same way that the other ones do. Now, from a critical standpoint, I think it's pretty good. But on a personal, subjective standpoint, and then Josie closes out the album uh, with some really, really great guitar leads. I love the mysteriousness of the opening guitar. And then it just transforms into this soul-filled fiesta. This party just breaks out. I love the chorus. And then as the tempo shifts up in the chorus, the keys are a very nice touch in that regard. And then the ending of the chorus itself is fantastic. It's one of those big moments in the album. And it's a nice welcome back party for Josie, but a nice send off for us. Now I'm going to move over a little bit so we can put some graphics on the video. I can't really move over that much. <laughs> There's a table over here. It's a little dark. Let's turn this bow over here. Yeah, it's a little brighter. So my favorite moment, my favorite lyrics and my song ranking for the album. My favorite moments is easily the instrumental break in the title track, Asia. I mean, just the way that the guitar, the drums, uh, the bass, I mean, everyone, <laughs> everyone really saxophone. Everyone just goes off on that section. Uh, the drumming is just out of this world, but those solos do not lack. That is peak steely to me. My favorite lyrics on the album. I have half of them on my notes and half of them here, so this is weird. But my favorite lyrics on the album are actually from Deacon Blues. The chorus, actually. Uh, Learn to work the saxophone. I'll play just what I feel. Drink scotch whiskey all night long and die behind the wheel. They got a name for the winners in the world. I, I want a name when I lose. 
They call Alabama the Crimson Tide, call me Deacon Blues. I just really like this testosterone-filled and romanticized fantasy that he's living out. He doesn't want to play the saxophone, he wants to work it, okay? He doesn't care about like the actual learning it and the theory, just let him work it, okay? He wants to be a cool saxophone player, he's gonna have it. He wants to drink scotch whiskey and then go die behind the wheel? Not a great idea to be honest, but you know what? That's the lifestyle he wants to live. He doesn't care about winning. He wants to name when he loses. This man is about taking life into his own hands, pursuing his, his dreams, his delusions, if you will, <laughs> despite any consequences or repercussions. Uh, the music is smooth in the song, of course. Uh, the lyrics are cynical, a little dark humorish, but also kind of funny. <laughs> and then finally getting to my song ranking, which will come up from the bottom here. Uh, Black Cow is my favorite song on the album. Uh, Home at Last. Deacon Blues, Asia, Peg, Josie, and at the bottom, some bad news for I Got The News. By the way, the first like six songs on the album, out of seven, are pretty good. <laughs> I Got The News is the only one I don't really love. I really think that this is a standout album historically on a jazz level, on a pop music level, even edging towards a rock level with all the influences that it carries Walter and Donald really did a fantastic job, not only on the musicians that they hired because they did a great job to their credit as well, but in the production side of things, in telling these stories, you know, the music is smooth. And like I said, there's a, it's breezy in the music, the lyrics, sometimes a little sleazy, you know, but it's that dark sense of humor, that cynicism, that sardonic kind of telltale style that they have that kind of makes it fun and interesting to listen to. It's a very sophisticated album from musicianship, lyrics, and production side. And if I had to think of a criticism, besides I Got The News, uh, I could kind of see where every song kind of sounds somewhat similar. But on the other hand, I do think that they maintain a balance and that each song really does have its own personality. So yes, they have a similar structure, a similar style, but I mean, you're listening to the same band. <laughs> this isn't a variety album. <laughs> One thing I really love about it is that the album is seven songs long, 40 minutes. It's a lean album. They trimmed the fats. And you can listen to the documentary. They had solos and extra stuff on there that they, they cut out. They really knew what they were making and they worked towards making a perfect, a beyond perfect album for them. So the album is great to listen to, whether you're listening to it for musicianship uh, or whether you're just listening to it to chill in the background. It kind of captures you in all realms. And with that, I'm left satisfied. Do I personally think that it's the best album ever and that like it is just like just, just perfect? Personally, not for me. But I think that it's as close as you can pretty much get <laughs> to, to being perfect without me calling it perfect. Of course, I would love to know what you guys think. You can join me on Twitter. Definitely join me in the comments down below and let me know what you think of the whole album. Like I said before, if you want to hear more details on what I think of the songs, you can go to my first listens uh, here on the channel. They'll be in a playlist somewhere. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.